Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 mini series with the Seattle Mariners. And we are about halfway through the 2024 season. Uh, the Mariners in a pretty tight battle with the Rangers, the Angels, and the Astros in the American League West. Only three and a half games separate those four teams. Right now, we are in second in the division, and we are up one on the Yankees and Rays. And then you can see there's also many other teams within two games of us uh, for a wild card spot in the American League. So a really tight battle thus far. Uh, the only thing that we see in this 2024 season that is probably as expected is the Oakland A's uh, sinking like a boulder in the ocean in the AL West standings. But other than that, uh, everyone is pretty competitive. We're getting close to the trade deadline. Uh, it's the end of this month, obviously. And as we talked about at the end of the last episode, there's a few directions we might go. I think the easiest to probably bring on board is a corner outfielder that can hopefully provide a higher batting average than either Taylor Trammell or Mitch Hanniger have so far, although we are a, a pretty good team in terms of home run power. Everyone on the squad is contributing on that front, and you can see we rank fourth in the American League in terms of home runs. But a corner outfielder with a decent bat could certainly help us. A big-time infielder would be a nice asset. And then some help, uh, particularly for the starting rotation, would also be something that I think might make sense to do. I don't know how serious of a true contender we are with our top pitcher out for the season and Julio Rodriguez, um, only with a day-to-day -day injury, but it's something that's going to impact him for four weeks. Moderate impact on his <clears throat> running with that knee tendonitis, and he is... Uh, the cornerstone of our offense, so that is, as I often say, not optimal for him to be dealing with that injury. So I don't know if we're really a true World Series contender this year, so I think I'd like to add some help, but I don't know that I necessarily want to pay full retail and mortgage our future to bring on that help, and if we're also able to bring somebody on board who will likely be with us for more than just two or three months, i.e. the player's not a rental, that would certainly make me a little more willing to bring someone on board. Clearly, my expectation is that most of the impact players on the trade market are going to be rentals and will probably be a bit expensive for my tastes. But we're going to keep an eye on the market. I'm also going to try to get through the draft and uh, see if we can maybe add a little bit of talent for the future. One of our owner's expectations is for us to uh, find a top 20 prospect. Probably not going to do that with where we'll be picking in the draft. Probably a bit more realistic for uh, international amateur free agency next uh, January when the signing period begins for us to add a uh, potential top 20 prospect. But that's uh, another goal that we are going to at least think about trying to achieve over the next several episodes. And we haven't been playing great the first uh, 10 or 11 games in July. Uh, we're one game under 500 for the month, uh, which puts us at only one game over 500 for the season. Taking a look at the standings, uh, still in second place, but we've slipped to three behind the Rangers in the division. And we are tied with the Red Sox for the final wild card spot in the American League. And you can see there is still a handful of teams within three games of us for that wild card spot. So, going to continue to be a pretty hard fought battle to make it to the playoffs in the American League this year. Uh, before we get to that, though, and thinking about uh, the team going forward, we've made it to the first year player draft, and our Mariners will be picking 15th. You may remember from our Yankees miniseries that was started with the original version of the game, the uh, draft pools were not particularly impressive in uh, the early stages of the game, uh, especially in 2024. Taking a look at the pool available this year, a little bit higher rated, uh, but still not an overwhelming number of uh, 
higher end potential prospects as far as everyday players and even with the pitchers um, a little more depth there uh, but certainly not overwhelming we'll see who's available when we're going to pick at 15th but probably not going to spend too too much time walking you through my thought process around this draft since uh the thought is we'll probably only be playing a few seasons with these Mariners uh, until we move into our long-term sim in the coming weeks in OOTP 25. So most of the guys that we're picking up in this draft are uh, unlikely to be ever playing for the Mariners while we'll be in charge of this team. And there's actually some interesting players available for us at pick 15. Uh, several pitchers that are higher end ceilings, at least according to our scout. Uh, Ryan Sloan stands out with the highest potential, uh, but he's going to be very dependent on that changeup developing to become a major league starter. Do like some of his personality traits. He's also looking for a lot of money, but there's actually a fair amount of interesting uh, everyday players available. The ones most interesting to me. Uh, the shortstop, Bryce Rayner. Uh, he's a potential two-way guy, which is always interesting. Um, doesn't have the greatest work ethic in the world, which uh, is something I do care about, but really like his potential to be a useful arm if everything goes well with a good glove and a potentially useful bat. Malcolm Moore, catcher. Decent potential bat with some home run power and ability to draw walks. Competent defensive short uh, defensive catcher. Speaking of shortstops, Carter Johnson, you may remember, he's who we ended up picking in this draft in our Yankees playthrough that uh, only lasted for three series before we upgraded after the second patch. I uh, think he looks like a decent prospect as well. And Miles Gossain. Another guy who's a decent prospect, I probably rank him a little behind the other guys that we've talked about, but we're going to likely go with Michael Mullinax. Um, I like the combination of potentially plus contact, plus gap power with good speed, plus power, good defensive outfielder. Don't know a lot about his personality, uh, but our scout thinks he's the highest end potential everyday player out there. Scouting director, not surprisingly, recommending Mullinax if we were to go with a pitcher. Uh, mentioning uh, Ryan Sloan, another guy who we talked about, the highest potential guy that was out there. But we are um, going to go with Mullinax, only looking for slots and not looking for crazy money. Um, hopefully, in a few years, he could be helping out in the outfield next to J-Rod and give us uh, two... Pretty good defensive outfielders with pretty good bats if he's able to uh, reach his full potential. Also like that he's a switch hitter. So we are going to uh, meet the demand for Mullinax, which is uh, well below slot, which will give us a little more money to potentially play with uh, post the draft or uh, in terms of maybe signing someone who's looking for more than slot that we pick in the upcoming rounds. And with our second round pick, Miles Gosain still around. I mentioned um, despite the really good power, he's probably the guy I was least interested in of those position players. But here in the second round, uh, certainly potentially interesting value. That said, there are a couple of the starting pitchers still around um, that I was somewhat intrigued by. Didn't spend a lot of time on them last round. But Levi Sterling, I uh, think he's a guy who could have plus stuff with acceptable movement and control. Uh, potential four-pitch arsenal if the curve and changeup develop. Decent enough stamina. Um, Right-hander who's throwing in the low 90s, not looking for a ton of money. And then there's also Boston Bateman, 18-year-old stuff. Uh, potentially incredible. Average movement, slightly below average control. But he's really going to be reliant on uh, the change in curve developing to reach his full potential. Fortunately, our scout thinks they're not too far off major league quality, so I think there's a reasonable chance that they'll both develop. He's a lefty, also not looking for crazy money. See what our scout recommends, and he recommends Gosain. 
And as much as I didn't love Gosain in the first round, uh, certainly does have potential holes in his game with uh, his likely lack of ability to draw walks and the fact that he looks like he's a mediocre defensive third baseman, could be a pretty interesting defensive first baseman. But he's not looking for crazy money and uh, does have the potential to hit a, uh, I don't want to say an insane number of home runs, but if he fully developed, he could definitely be a pretty interesting power hitter. So we are actually going to once again go with our uh, scouts recommendation and meet the demand to bring Miles Gosain on board in the second round. And in the third round, we're going to go with a guy we've already talked about. I uh, think this is pretty good value for Boston Bateman. Also hadn't recognized that it's 6'7 uh, with the nickname of Sasquatch. Uh, kind of respect that. I think he could uh, have potentially excellent stuff. Left-hander, has enough stamina to start. It's going to be a matter of um, the curve and the changeup developing and hopefully the fastball getting a little better. But uh, we think those pitches aren't that far off major league quality now. And honestly, as a third rounder, uh, it's a little early in my mind to pick someone who you know is going to be a reliever. Uh, but in a worst case scenario, I think Sasquatch could be a pretty interesting relief pitcher for us. So we are going to go ahead and uh, draft him in the third round. So we're through the draft now, and uh, we did end up going uh, relatively reasonable with the uh, players that we made offers to. Uh, Mullinax was well below slot, and that let us... Um, Picking Gosain and Bateman, a couple of guys who were looking for a little more than slot. And then also in the sixth or the seventh round, actually take Ariston Vizi, a uh, guy who was looking for more than the uh, minimal bonus that you'd be giving to a player drafted that late in the game. And even with that, with the fact that Mullinax was a relatively, hopefully, easy signing for us. That uh, did allow us to divert a little bit of money away from uh, spending on draft players, which gives us uh, a bit more flexibility in terms of the money that we will have available to potentially take on some contracts to help us as we try to uh, ensure that this team is going to be competing for a playoff spot in late September. And unfortunately, we've uh, dropped another game uh, below 500, or in this case, um, dropping a game versus 500 means we've dropped to 500 for the season at this point as we get to the All-Star game, 49 and 49. Uh, you could say that the AL West is kind of as expected with the Rangers and Astros on top, us in third, the Angels in fourth. And then the surging A's, who are 9-1 and one in their last 10 and who have won five in a row after I was speaking disparagingly of them uh, surging to 14 games behind. So we're kind of where we thought we should be, uh, but we are actually a game out of the final wild card spot at this time. Taking a look at the league leaders here midway through the season and uh, Logan Gilbert leading the American League in pitcher war, only a 5-5 five and five record, uh, but does have a 327 ERA with 140 strikeouts and a uh, excellent 63 fit minus 2.83 Sierra and that league best 4.5 war that we mentioned. And uh, we can see here that he is a all-star for the American League for the first time in his career. We'll find out if uh, any other... Seattle Mariners are going to be joining him in the All-Star game this year. Uh, you can see Logan Gilbert makes the team. Gabe Spire is a reliever 5-3 and three with a 1.98 ERA on the team. Cal Raleigh is the catcher. 19 homers, 51 ribbies, pretty solid defense. Um, not a shock there. And uh, that is it. J-Rod, not an All-Star this year. So... The catcher, Rally, the reliever, Spire, and the starting pitcher, Logan Gilbert, representing the Seattle Mariners in the 2024 All-Star Game. 
And coming out of the All-Star break, uh, we've got less than two weeks until the trade deadline. And uh, we see a name on the IL that is a Yankees fan I certainly don't want to see. Uh, actually, not the IL, the trade block, if I could speak properly. But uh, the Yankees are shopping Juan Soto. Uh, clearly, that would be a big addition for our offense uh, Soto having just a great year, 280 average, 36 homers, and 81 ribbies through 82 games, an OPS of close to 1,100. Uh, I don't know if, uh, I guess the Yankees at 45 and 53, 17 games out, losers of seven in a row heading into the All-Star break, uh, just think that it's over. I have to imagine the price is going to be... Uh, Likely, I'm guessing Julio Rodriguez is the only one that we'd be able to uh, give up straight up for Juan Soto. Actually, we've got nobody who makes the deal work, but that's probably just because of the money Soto is making. Yeah, if uh, we get the Yankees to retain a big chunk of his contract, we'd have to send uh, J-Rod in return, who's down to just uh, one day recovering from that knee tendonitis. So although we've been... Playing him more often than not over the last couple of weeks, we are going to sit him for this first game coming out of the All-Star break and hopefully ensure that he's completely healthy the rest of the way. So as attractive an option as Soto might be to try to add, uh, we're not going to trade away Rodriguez, who's on a pretty reasonable contract going forward for a two-and-a-half-month rental of Soto, and then the prospect that he'll probably be making twice of what Rodriguez is on the open market. Uh, he'd certainly help us, uh, but not, uh, not a trade that we're able or willing to make. And you can see a decent amount of uh, higher-end pitchers available as well. So we're going to explore the options if there's someone who is available at a reasonable price. Uh, particularly if it's not just a two-and-a-half-month rental. Uh, we'll try to explore some things. If I come up with anything interesting, I'll be sure to let you know. And we have made a trade. It was not uh, the blockbuster I was hoping for. Uh, the prices for the high-end pitchers, the starters in particular, and the high-end everyday players were... Uh, more than I was willing to spend at this point. But we're going to check back in in 10 days or so. But it was important for us to get a corner outfielder now uh, because Michael Conforto is banged up with a couple of injuries coming out of the All-Star break. A finger blister, not the end of the world, but also back spasms with an unknown recovery time on top of that. So even though uh, he has been our most productive corner outfielder this year with a 105 WRC+. Plus. Um, we're not going to be able to send Trammell or Hanniger to the bench right away since uh, for at least the next 10 days or so we're going to need someone to fill in for Conforto, and it could end up being longer than that depending on his back issues. So we have reached out, and I know I was complaining about Trammell in his 192 average, and Mitch Hanniger in his 179 average. And we've made a trade for a guy who's um, not going to help too, too much on that front. We're bringing in over the veteran outfielder Seth Brown, who's hitting just a buck 94 for the A's. Does have 18 home runs. Home run power has never been an issue for him. Uh, can also play first base for us. Um, arbitration eligible next year uh, so there's a chance we could bring him back and the A's were willing to retain all of his contract and we also picked up a starter um, Paul Blackburn um, certainly kind of a league average-ish type starting profile although I still think that may be a bit of an upgrade from the back end of our rotation they were willing to keep most of his contract. Um, he'll be a free agent after this year, so um, he is a rental, but not a particularly expensive rental in the money that we're paying. And we had to give up uh, minor league pitcher Stephen Kolick, who was in AAA, 27-year-old, um, not part of our future. Blackburn is an upgrade from him, at least for this year. 
So that's not a problem. Um, we also gave up the minor league outfielder, R.J. Shrek. Uh, he did have 13 home runs in Class A ball this year, but he's a 24-year-old who we didn't view as a big part of our future. Uh, so even though Blackburn is a rental and Brown quite possibly uh, may be expensive enough next season that we just move on from him in arbitration, didn't feel like we were making a big financial commitment in either case, and also didn't feel like we were giving up anyone who was really a big part of our future. So certainly Brown will take over for Conforto for the time being. Hopefully the change of scenery will help him. And then eventually the thought is that when uh, Conforto is likely to come back, hopefully at that point Brown will be more productive than Trammell or Hanniger and maybe we look to move on from one of those players. And as far as the pitching staff, uh, we sent down Ryan Stanek, who's had some control issues and still had an option to AAA to make room for Blackburn, although Blackburn's profile admittedly is uh, pretty similar to that of Austin Voth. Um, He's been more successful as a major leaguer this year, granted pitching in Oakland rather than Seattle, but we're going to move up Blackburn into the spot as our number five starter, move Voth to the bullpen. Uh, Voth had pitched his way to close to a five ERA this season, so he certainly was not overwhelming as the number five starter. Uh, that three and nine record that he boasts, certainly not particularly impressive either. So hopefully we'll catch a little bit of lightning in a bottle with Blackburn rather than both as our number five starter. And um, as I said, I'm still going to monitor things over the next 10 or 12 days. Uh, hopefully the prices on maybe more impactful players will come down a bit. But at the very least, we've added a little bit of depth to this roster and hopefully are a slightly better team as we finish up Friday, July 19th, than we were when the day began. And we've simmed ahead about a week and a half. Not too, too much has changed. Uh, we're tied for second in the division with the Astros, a game and a half behind the Rangers. And we are tied with the Astros for the final wild card spot in the American League. Two and a half up on the White Sox right now, who actually just beat us, uh, but... We're in position to make the playoffs, not necessarily feeling great about our chances. We're going to see if maybe some of the prices have come down a little bit. Blackburn only pitched one game for us, but it's been a good one. Um, six innings pitched, allowed three hits, three walks while striking out five, just one earned run. So uh, he's certainly done better so far than Voth. And Voth, uh, as you can see, his ERA has actually climbed a bit while working out of the pen. Unfortunately, Seth Brown has not been quite as productive. Actually, he has been. He got off to a really bad start, but he's had a couple of big games. The batting average up to 304 with two homers and five ribbies in uh, 23 at bats. Just to show you that uh, I'm not lying, I checked in on him a couple of games ago, and uh, you can see he's hit uh, his two home runs and his four of his ribbies for us uh, the last couple of games. And he's also three for his last eight and uh, five for his last 11. So before that, it was a uh, bit of a rough start for him. He had two hits in his first game with us against Houston and then Ophers against Houston and three straight games against the Angels uh, before he was somewhat productive in the uh, White Sox series. Although, as I talked about, we did lose two out of three there. Still waiting, unfortunately, for hopefully Mr. Conforto to get healthy, still an unknown recovery from him. He's recovered from the blister on his finger, still dealing with the back spasms. Certainly would love for him to be healthier so he could potentially move on from a Hanniger or a Trammell. I think it's probably more likely we'd move on from Trammell. And uh, J-Rod banged up again. Um, wrist soreness, going to have a moderate impact on him for four days. So we'll try to uh, keep him as healthy as possible so we don't lose another outfielder. But it's uh, put up or shut up time for us now with just uh, three days of game action left until the trade deadline. 
if we're going to do something more substantive, uh, now is certainly the time to do it. And we'll see if perhaps uh, the prices for some more impactful players have come down a bit since uh, we last checked in about a week and a half ago. And we've spent a lot of time researching the trade market and uh, just have not been able to make a deal for one of the big time players. But we still have made three more trades. Uh, we're going to the well of this Oakland team in our own division. And we traded away the utility player, Samad Taylor, who is hitting just a buck 83 for us this year. Uh, really liked his speed liked his defensive versatility but we included taylor and then a minor league catcher ty duval who's really kind of a uh, organizational depth guy at this point we had him in class a he certainly could be playing at a higher level than that but wasn't a big part of our future and we brought nick allen on board um, now comparing him to samad taylor allen is better defensively although he only knows how to play second and short right now, but we do view him as a guy that we'll be able to make into kind of a really good defensive super utility guy going forward. He could even play corner outfield spots, certainly could be trained up to play third base as well. So he's better defensively, although not as versatile quite yet. He's better in the clubhouse, and he's a bit better contact hitter but he is not nearly as um, fast as Samad Taylor, and his power is actually worse than Taylor as well. But Allen, at least, has hit 234 this year. He's above the Mendoza line, and uh, he's still likely to be making the major league minimum next year. And I think, as I said, he could be a pretty valuable utility player for us and probably somebody who we would start against left-handed pitching it's kind of what we tried to do with taylor this year but it just didn't work out not a huge acquisition but i think it makes sense for us uh, both for this year and next year probably the most significant trade um, we traded away ty france uh, the first baseman he had hit a buck 96 for us this year no homers in 138 at bats with the addition of goldschmidt um, he became more of a utility guy for us who was only playing against left-handed pitching. But even last year when he hit 12 home runs, um, he was a below average offensive player, not that good defensively, and he was set to be making about $7.5 million next year. Just think that a first baseman who can't really hit and is making $7.5 million didn't really have a place on our team for the future. So we uh, sent France and a minor league center fielder, Bill Knight, um, not a big part of our organization, some negative personality traits, to San Diego for Brandon Belt, admittedly a guy who does have some negative personality traits, but he is a much better bat right now. Um, even though he's hitting just 230 this year, he does have 22 homers and 369 at-bats, 121 WRC+. Plus. Certainly expect that he will be a more potent offensive player than France was for us. He can also, uh, as a left-handed hitter, help us against right-handed pitching in the event that Conforto's injury ends up being an issue. He's going to be a free agent after this year, uh, so it's another guy who uh, we're going to need to replace next year. But we'll worry about next year when we get there. I think it's unlikely that Belt will be back with us. But I um, think he can definitely help our offense a bit this year. And then last but not least, um, with the addition of Belt in that left-handed bat, which we put into the lineup instead of uh, Taylor Trammell. Trammell really didn't have any role left on our team. He had hit below 200 this year. But we liked the captain personality, so we were just looking for someone um, where we could get a captain personality back, and we did do that with Elvis Andrews. Um, Trammell, certainly at 26 years old, younger, uh, so this is another rental move for us. Uh, but Andrews, another good defensive player, has that captain personality. He's going to start for us against left-handers and then be a bench player against right-handers. 
Um, he's at least been an average offensive player this year for Oakland, um, which we certainly could not say about Trammell. So another guy who's not a big part of our future, but honestly, I think in terms of moving on from Trammell, moving on from Ty France, and moving on from Samad Taylor, we actually moved on from some guys who probably weren't going to be big parts of our future anyways. Um, so a little bit of a win-now focus, but no long-term commitments, and I do think that it's uh, very conceivable that Allen will be with us for several years to come, and as I said, either uh, through the off-season, through the development lab, or through spring training, uh, we'll certainly try to work on getting him capable of playing third base, and as I mentioned, um, also may try to get him to be able to play left and right field for us as well. Certainly could play first base at a high level, not the tallest player in the world, but um, with the rest of his skills, I think he'd be fine there. Uh, so we're going to try to hopefully turn him into a really good utility player for us, at least in the infield with good defense. And again, I think that contact will be okay. Um, he's got enough speed to um, hopefully leg out a few extra base hits here and there. Never going to hit for much power, but um, Taylor, although he had the better speed, um, not as good a contact hitter, and he wasn't going to hit for a ton of power either. So none of these trades are revolutionary. But on the margins, I think uh, the five trades that we've made are going to make us a little bit better team. Still waiting at this point to find out what's going on with Conforto. Still an unknown return from those back spasms. But feel with the uh, additions of Belt, Allen, Andrews, Seth Brown, and Paul Blackburn that uh, we have a little bit better team now than we did at the start of the episode and at the start of the month. And given that we are in a uh, pretty interesting battle for the playoffs right now, uh, hopefully the little moves that we made will ultimately prove to be the difference down the stretch. And fortunately, although we lost yesterday to Boston, uh, Conforto now healthy, so we brought him back on the roster, and we actually ended up sending Nick Allen down to AAA, got caught in a bit of a numbers game, uh, but I did mention that we wanted to get him proficient at third base, so this will give us an opportunity to force start him there every day, probably for the next month, and then bring him back up in September. But certainly feel that, uh, particularly with Conforto back and healthy now, the roster is in a much better place than it was at the start of the month in terms of a few more proven major league hitters who hopefully will help us generate more offense as we try to guide this team into the playoffs here in 2024. And we've made it to trade deadline day. We're actually not playing well. We've lost three in a row and four out of five. We've slipped to below 500 at this point. So as we sit here, uh, we're now in third place, two and a half back. And we're two games behind the Astros for the final wild card. They've won five in a row while we've lost three in a row. But still think that um, we can make a run over the last two months of the season if we can stay healthy. We've also been sitting J-Rod the last couple of days trying to get him over his latest lingering injury. And we did make one more trade. Uh, we traded a decent prospect, minor league second baseman Michael Arroyo. Um reason we moved on from him is that I just don't know that the bat's ever going to be enough that we're going to want it in the lineup. Um, not a lot of power and pretty mediocre in terms of his potential contact, gap power, and eye, and also not an incredible glove, although that could certainly get better. Um, decent speed. Hit just a buck 85 in A ball this year, but he was only 19 years old. Um, so certainly is some potential. Um, but we got a pretty good reliever from the Tampa Bay Rays. And we picked up the veteran reliever, Jason Adam, from the Tampa Bay Rays. They had actually recently sent him down to AA, or uh, AAA, 
Uh, so I guess that they have just so good in their bullpen, they didn't feel like they needed him anymore. He's still arbitration eligible next year, uh, should be making a little over $4 million. Uh, that might work for us. Uh, I think we've kind of done a little bit with some of these trades in terms of cleaning the decks for our payroll next year as well. So we're going to have some flexibility. Uh, certainly really good stuff with a well above average change up slider and fastball. And over the course of his major league career at this point, he's been a well above average pitcher with a 133 ERA plus and a 91 FIP minus 2.74 Sierra. So think that he will certainly help uh, lengthen out our bullpen as well. That let us make uh, another move. Um, sent down Cody Bolton, who hadn't had a great year for us. Um, Another guy who had been struggling with his control a bit, 437 ERA, and he had walked 18 batters in 45 and a third innings. Still his options uh, may be part of our future still, but feel like at this point, um, we've definitely strengthened the bullpen. Munoz having a nice year as a closer, and now with Spire, Adam, and Santos as setup men. Uh, Saucedo, Bizardo, Matt Brash, and then the former starter, Austin Voth, as our long reliever. Uh, feel like the bullpen is in better shape than it was certainly when the season started. Uh, and we'll find out shortly how all these moves work out for us. And we did get a win in the final game of the month against the Red Sox to get the record back to 500 at 55 and 55. Uh, Goldie with the 2,000th hit of his career in what will likely be his lone season in Seattle. So as we sit here um, at the end of the trade deadline, we'll sim forward to tomorrow and then we'll uh, see exactly what this team looks like in terms of the standings and feel like we got a chance to get this team in the playoffs. I know we're not in the playoffs right now, and there's only two months to go, but I do feel like if we remain healthy with the moves that we've made, we've certainly bolstered the roster for this year without uh, making a lot of long-term sacrifices. And taking a look at the standings here on August 1st, mentioned we were 55 and 55, but that's only a game and a half behind the Rangers in the division and only one game behind the Astros for the final wild card spot in the National League or in the American League. And the other wild card teams, the Rays and the Red Sox, are only two and three games um, ahead of the Astros. So they're certainly teams that we could track down in the standings in the coming weeks as well. Uh, looks like Soto didn't end up being traded away from the Yankees. They were looking for a lot. Uh, disappointing year for them. Seven losses in a row, 48-62 and 62 record. But that is not our concern. Our concern is our Seattle Mariners. Uh, taking a look at the team statistics here. Did just conclude a third straight losing month, uh, so that's certainly disappointing after the nice April we had, but feel that the team is as good as it's ever been this year. Tenth in the league in runs scored, but do feel like adding, um, getting Conforto back from the injured list and adding Brandon Belt, Seth Brown, and even to a lesser extent, Elvis Andrews should help us generate more offense. The guys who they were replacing in the lineup had all been well below average offensive players this year. So you would have to think that uh, we're in a better position now than we were previously. And runs allowed, we're middle of the pack, uh, seventh in the league and runs allowed. Uh, but our starters ERA is second in the bullpen, ERA is sixth. So the pitching really hasn't been that bad. And we have also bolstered that, as we talked about, adding Blackburn into the rotation and bringing Adam on into the bullpen. So, are we a World Series championship team? Probably not. But I think we're a better team than we were at the start of the month. And uh, I think if we stay healthy, we've got a good chance of getting this team into the playoffs. Uh, we're right there. 
J-Rod just dealing with that wrist soreness for only one more day, hopefully, and then we'll have him back in the lineup. And uh, we don't have a game today, so he'll hopefully be back and healthy when we begin the first series in August against the Phillies. And then other than that, um, nobody's banged up at the major league level. And we know that Kowar and Kirby are not going to be back this year. So uh, we've got a team that we like. Um, and we've got some guys down in AAA who I think should be able to help us when we get to September call-up. So looking forward to seeing what this team can do down the stretch. And we'll find out whether or not we are able to guide the Mariners to their second playoff appearance in over two decades in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.